But let's get straight into it. Improving the home envelope. Now, what is this home envelope I'm talking about? Well, the home envelope is basically everything from the ceiling down, from the walls and windows in, and from the floor up. So I don't want you to be thinking about your ceiling cavity. That's not a place you really want to be insulating. You want to be insulating the area you live in, and that's the home envelope. You want to seal that up so that air can't move in and out of the envelope, and you also want to heavily insulate it. And I'll talk about both of those things. Uh, that will help you in both summer and winter, although winter is where we're trying to get the most benefit. <clears throat> there are three important things you can do to improve the home envelope. The first of those is to seal it. That is to stop air leaking in and out. The second thing you can do is bulk insulate it. Now I use this word bulk, there are two types of insulation, I'll explain that later on, but just think of bulk insulation is those bats or loose fill that you would have seen you'd be very familiar with. Uh, and third, window coverings. Windows are very important. Windows lose a lot of energy and they also create currents which move air around and make you feel less comfortable. So I'm going to talk about all three of those things. But let's start with uh, air leaks and sealing up the home envelope. Unfortunately, Australian homes tend to be riddled with holes. In other countries like uh, Canada, Europe, parts of North America where it's really cold, they actually require that you wrap the home in plastic, put a blower door on the front door, increase the pressure in the home and find out where the leaks are and seal them up before you even sell a house. But in this country we don't do that because we do have a milder climate. That results in leaky homes. Um, not only does a leaky home mean that you directly lose hot air to the outside or in summer gain hot air inside, it also can create a draft. Now drafts can cool you down by up to four degrees. So you could be sitting in a room that's 18 degrees, which is quite a comfortable temperature, but it could feel like 14 if there's a lot of air moving around because of drafts. So sealing up the house has two benefits. Keeps the heat in, stops the drafts. And this is the cheapest and most effective way uh, to make you feel more comfortable and to use less energy. So how do you find leaks? Well, I've got a really simple trick for you. It doesn't cost you anything. On a windy day, it's going to work best on a windy day because then the air is going to be forced through the cracks. Close up the entire house. Close up all your doors and windows. Turn off your heaters. Make sure your exhaust fans are off. And then get a piece of incense. And you want to stand in different places all over your home, in front of your front door or your back door, up high and down low, in the corner of rooms, in front of windows, in the middle of the room. You just want to stand there for 30 seconds. And if you see a stream of smoke coming off the incense consistently in one direction, then that's telling you the air is coming from the other direction. So use the incense to track back to where the, the, the air is coming from and then seal it up. So remember the incense test. The other thing I want to mention at this point, I'm just about to go through a bunch of different uh, leaky parts of our home, but you can be creative. So I'm going to give you some solutions, but it doesn't matter. All you're trying to do is seal up the leak. If you find a way that's different from the way I describe, that's fine. It's a creative exercise, sealing up your house, unfortunately. There's no orthodoxy to it. So I won't read through this list because we're going to go through all these with pictures. But these are major sources of leaks. Things like down lights and gaps and cracks around skirting boards, <clears throat> evaporative cooling vents, etc. But we'll go through these with pictures so I can illustrate it a bit better. Now the first thing I want to explain is down lights and recessed lights. Uh, now we don't have any down lights in this room, but down lights are the, well, these are sort of down lights. These are down lights that you can directionally, that you can point in any direction. But mostly, most down lights are just flush with the ceiling. Recessed lights are lights that go up into the ceiling like this. They're a sort of a dome and you can generally put an old school 240 volt globe up into the dome. So, what do we want to do with these? Well, these actually, down lights will, uh, don't seal very well, so they'll often act like chimneys and actively suck warm air out of your house. But, if we put a down light cover, a, properly in, uh, a proper down light cover on the down light, not only does it seal the down light, but it also means that you can insulate right up to the sides of the cover. Now, there's only one type of cover that I recommend because there's only one cover on the Australian market that you can insulate up to the sides of. All other covers, you have to still leave a, a big gap around the downlight, and that's no good for your insulation. So this is called a 10-mat cover. I will actually write that one up. T-E-N-M-A-T. They're not expensive, about $15 each, and if you buy in bulk, I think you, get, uh, you might get a discount. 10 mat covers, they're from downlightcovers.com.au. You can't really miss that one. Uh, the way these work, this is an example of a 10 mat cover over a, uh, a simple regular downlight. The way they work is, well, you actually silicon seal it 
uh, to the actual ceiling, and then you can insulate right up to the side of it. The cover itself is rock wool. It's fire, <laughs> fire retardant to 1,000 degrees. Uh, and as I say, the great benefit is you can insulate up to the sides and over the top of those covers, which you can't do with any other cover. I would make one other recommendation with downlights, though. Um, if you have halogen downlights, those are the old school ones, they blow a lot, they, they're very hot. If you don't know what you've got, touch it, put your hand near it, don't actually touch it because you'll burn yourself. But if it's really hot, that's a halogen downlight. That's using a lot of energy. I would actually replace them with LEDs at this point. LEDs uh, use virtually no energy. They produce virtually no heat, so they're not a fire hazard, and they will last 40 to 50 times longer than a halogen. In other words, you put them in, and unless you get the one in 100 that's a dud, it'll last for 20 years. Well, I can't guarantee you 20 years, but it'll last you a hell of a long time. So that's, da that's classic downlights. Now with recessed lights, much the same thing. You just need a bigger cover because, of course, the recessed light goes up into the ceiling like this, so you need a bigger cover to put over it. But once again, you can just insulate right up to the sides of it, and voila, you've solved the issue. Let's move on to exhaust fans. Here's a classic exhaust fan. This is basically a hole in your ceiling. So any warm air in the room with the exhaust fan will just be going straight up the exhaust fan, even if the fan isn't on. It's still a hole in your ceiling. This is what we call a draft stopper. As I've put here, draftstopper.com.au. This simply gets put over the exhaust fan. These flaps will close when the fan's not on, and they open up when the fan is on. Now that stops the exhaust fan acting like a chimney, and then once again with your insulation, you can insulate right up to the sides of it. So the draft stopper is a great, um, a great thing to use with an exhaust fan. The other thing I want to mention though, most of you will probably have a tastic in your bathroom. Does everyone know what a tastic is? Yes, with the, the heating elements, heating lamps. Right, so I would not put one of these over a tastic. The reason being, if someone accidentally leaves the heating elements on, the heat will build up under the cover and could be a fire hazard. And that's the last thing we want. What I would do instead with Tastics is either, very simply, keep that door shut and draft seal that door. It'll just be a bathroom door. So draft seal it as best you can and try to stop any heat from your house getting into your bathroom. Uh, the second thing you can do though, especially if it's an old Tastic and maybe it's broken or one of the lights isn't working, it needs replacement anyway, get yourself an Eco Tastic. They have a built-in one of these and also a temperature sensor that automatically turns the, the, uh, the Tastic off if it gets too hot. So that reduces fire hazard, and also you get one of these built into it. They're a little bit more expensive um, than a standard Tastic, but yes, I would replace with an Eco Tastic if you're concerned about that. <clears throat> Moving on, next I want to talk about doors. So doors can be very leaky if you haven't draft sealed them. Uh, these pictures are a little difficult to show, but after the uh, presentation, if you'd like to, I've got some what we call draft sealing tape up here that you can come and have a look of and a touch of. Draft sealing tape is stuff that you put around door frames to seal the gap between the door and the door frame. It comes in rubber and uh, hardened foam. It even comes in brush. It's very cheap. It's easy to put on. And Sometimes it comes in big reels and you can take off 10 metres and just cut it and take it to the front of the hardware store. Or often it comes in a box like this and it has instructions on the back. Actually, the other thing I want to mention at this point is if you're ever worried about doing any of this stuff, YouTube is your best friend. Put the keywords into YouTube and there'll be 100 people across the world who will have a little video there showing you how to do it. <laughs> and this, Green It Yourself, is a local person showing you how to do these things. Does any, did anyone see Carbon Cops a few years ago? Lish from Carbon Cops has done greenityourself.com. It's a series of videos telling you how to do things like seal doors. So don't be afraid of doing this stuff yourself. It's actually, a lot of it's quite easy. You've just got to follow the instructions, look at a few videos, do it once, and you'll be confident you'll be fine after that. So with draft sealing tape, these are pictures of my front door. This brown stuff that you can probably just see here, that's the draft sealing tape. It's on the frame of the door, the door closes against it, air then can't get through. Before that I had about a three or four millimetre gap there. On, here's a picture, you put it on the door jam so that it doesn't get in the way of the door shutting. If anyone's worried about that I can show you after the uh, presentation. And here's my bathroom door, I've put a different type of draft sealing tape. You can see it's white and it's thinner because I had a thinner gap. So you really got to just go around your house, work out how big the gaps are, buy a bunch of draft sealing tape, go home and stick it on. Now the bottom of doors can also be very leaky. 
So there are a lot of different what we call draft excluders or bottom door seals and here's a couple of them. There's one there and one here. This is a spring loaded one. The reason it's spring loaded is because often on front doors you have a piece of metal across the front door. So it needs to spring up when you open the door to get over the piece of metal. These are about $25 at any hardware store and as long as you Always measure three times, cut once. <laughs> that's the, the goal, uh, that's the thing to do whenever you're doing DIY stuff. Measure thrice, cut once. Um, as long as you do that, they're not that hard to install actually. Um, so that's a bottom door seal. This is what I call an automatic snake. It sort of looks like a, uh, a paint roller. But the beauty of this, the reason I call it an automatic snake, is it stays with the door. You know, if, let's say you're using a, a snake at your front door to seal your front door. If you go out of your front door, the snake is then sitting well away from the door and you've got a gap under the door. But with this thing, there's a couple of hooks and it simply bolts onto the door and it stays with the door and it rolls. It's a paint roller type thing, so it rolls with the door when you open and close it. These are about $20 at whatever used to be Magnet Mart. So if you can't find things at Bunnings, go to Magnet Mart or another hardware store. They actually quite often have quite different ranges of this stuff. They'll all have draft sealing tape and they'll all have these things, but often they won't have the more exotic things like this. So that's doors. And I've sealed my front door and my bathroom door because I used to get a gale going under the front of my door and going through to my bathroom door. But I've eliminated that now and that's made the living room a lot more comfortable. Next, cracks. Gaps and cracks, you can find them all over your house. So here's a picture of a skirting board crack. Um, sealing something like that up, well, usually you'd use a, a silicon sealant or a corking gun. Uh, you can actually get water-based corking as well. Uh, but that gap looks a bit big for a corking gun. So you might use something like this. This is called a foam core rod. You can get this at any hardware store. Once again, you can come up and have a play with it if you like, but you just compress it and push it into that gap and voila, you've sealed the gap. Very cheap again too. Um, there's cornice cracks. Uh, architrave cracks, the architrave is the frame around here, not the actual window frame itself which is that, but the architrave out here. These sort of things often have cracks that are small enough that you can just use a corking gun and simply seal it. You can get different, you can get clear corking, you can get white corking, you can get different coloured corking as well. Uh, and then this picture, it doesn't come out very well, but there's actually a gap between the rubber, the black rubber seal here and the actual window itself. It's come out of the seal. You could actually take the window apart and put it back together, but if you don't, you're not confident to do that, once again, you just use a corking gun there to seal that gap. Now, these things are called passive vents. Has everyone seen those? You got any of those in your house? Yeah, okay. This is the old school passive vents, often found in walls. This is the ones found in houses in the, built in the late 70s through to the early 90s. Passive vents don't actually do anything for you. You're not going to suffocate if you get rid of your passive vents. We don't put them in new houses, haven't done so for 20 years. So you don't need them. You can rip them out and replaster and paint there. Or if you want a really simple, cheap way to make sure they're not letting any air through, simply get some contact, some plastic contact like you'd put on a school book. And so you just cut a piece of contact to that size stick it down on there and voila, you've stopped any air moving through it. Down here we have an a typical evaporative cooler vent. Uh, even when you close the, the vents like this, still a lot of air gets through them and the machine itself is meant to seal but often they don't seal particularly well. So what I would recommend is an Australian invention called a heat saver cover. Heatsaver.com.au I think it is. Um, they use magnets that you just attach around the frame here, very easy to do yourself, and then this cover goes over the top and voila, no air can get through there. Uh, they're not expensive, we're talking, depending on the size of the vent, something like $20 to $40, I think. Just have a look at their website. Um, once again, I guess you could just put clear contact over that and then rip it off when summer comes along too. That's another way to do it. Uh, and finally, there's things like permanent openings in toilets. Here's a permanent opening up here. Uh, you could get a piece of balsa wood or plywood or cardboard or this is actually called core flute board, this stuff here. This is really useful stuff. It's cheap, it's light, it's easy to cut with a Stanley knife. You could cut a piece of this, get some double-sided sticky tape and stick it up there. Or the other thing I should mention at this point, which comes in handy later on too with uh, window coverings, is Velcro. 
There's a whole range of self-adhesive Velcro products that are fantastic. You simply peel this off and you can stick one side of the Velcro onto just about anything, onto fabric, onto brick, onto plastic, onto wood. Come, you just stick it down, come back an hour later, and it's like rock. Um, you can get this at any sewing shop, some hardware stores, really useful stuff, Velcro. So you could put Velcro here and then make yourself a little cover and stick it on and take it off any time you want too, if you, if you want something that's removable. Don't forget the, Velcro, the range of Velcro products out there because they're really good now. So that's some examples of sealing your house up. Those are the major places that you'll need to seal. But as I say, test for yourself and see what you find.